Okay, we know that lithium ion batteries are a critical technology to making electric vehicles and green energy possible. Over 60% of all lithium ion batteries produced right now end up in electric cars. But we also know that there are some major problems that come along with these particular batteries, mainly that they require large quantities of rare metals that are difficult to extract from the earth. And this makes lithium ion batteries very expensive. We also have a problem with their lifespan. A battery's capacity to hold a charge will decrease as it ages, and they don't have a particularly long period of operating at full capacity. Problems like this have a big impact on the feasibility and sustainability of transitioning to an electric transportation system. So today, let's talk about solutions. This is absolutely not an unsolvable problem. And there are actually a lot of very smart people working right now on the early stages of lithium ion battery recycling. So far, they've been able to prove that this idea is not only possible, but profitable as well. And in a relatively short amount of time, we should be able to integrate battery recycling and battery production into one singular industry that brings us closer to sustainability than ever before. So let's get into it. So the first thing we should understand is why lithium ion batteries go bad in the first place. What happens to them to cause the reduced functionality? The internal chemistry of a battery cell is mostly made from metal. It varies depending on the cell, but let's just take a typical cylindrical battery from a Tesla Model Y. Inside the cell casing is the jelly roll, a multi-layered tight roll of various metals and compounds. You have an anode layer, that's the negative terminal of the battery. This is typically going to be a copper sheet that's laminated with graphite. You also have the cathode, that's the positive terminal. This one is going to be an aluminum sheet that's laminated with a combination of lithium, nickel, cobalt, and manganese. In between these two is a separator layer. The lithium ions have to move through this separator to get from one side of the battery to the other, while their electrons are split off and fed through the electrical circuit to power the car. And to facilitate that movement of lithium ions, the battery cell is filled with a liquid electrolyte solution made with lithium salt. People often refer to this solution as battery acid. So, one reason that a battery loses its capacity over time is because that liquid electrolyte begins to slowly break down at high temperatures and loses its capacity to shuttle lithium ions. Another reason is the formation of crystal structures within the nickel. This is caused by a reaction between lithium ions and nickel oxide. It forms a kind of salt buildup that alters the structure of the battery and takes away from the efficiency of the ion's movement. All anode and cathode materials, no matter how well they are constructed, will have tiny imperfections or rough spots, and that's where the crystal formation will begin. We're talking about a microscopic scale here, but it will add up over years. The good news is that there is no change whatsoever to the base materials of the battery cell. No matter how old it is, even totally spent lithium ion cells that won't even hold a charge anymore are still filled with perfectly good battery metals. So why don't we crack it open, take the metal out and make a new battery cell with fresh electrolyte that will work perfectly again? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. So you know the three R's for waste reduction, reduce, reuse, and recycle? Similar kind of ethos can be applied to lithium ion batteries. In this case, the mantra would be, recover, repurpose, and recombine. Recovery is an interesting side of the equation. So most of us have a bunch of old cell phones and broken laptops and other electronic junk all stored away in a drawer somewhere. 
I don't know why we do it. Most people probably just don't know what to do with these old devices. They were expensive to buy, so we don't want to just get rid of them. We know enough not to throw them in the trash, but we're not sure about proper disposal either. We're worried about data safety, or we just plain forget that we even have these things. This is a thorn in the side of battery recyclers. It's been theorized that the world's largest resource of battery metals is sitting in our collective junk drawers, locked away and inaccessible. So let this be a reminder to finally relieve yourself of all those junk electronics. Just take them to any legitimate e-waste drop-off point. Most electronic stores will offer this service or your community might have an e-waste disposal site. Next up is repurpose. This is something that most people probably don't think of, but as electric cars begin to age out, we really need to be conscious of opportunities to just straight up reuse those battery cells for a different purpose. For example, say an older EV like a 2012 Tesla Model S has been used and abused for its entire life and can now only charge up to 100 miles of range. The owner doesn't want it anymore and no one will buy it because they don't see any value in such a reduced capacity. So what do we do? Throw the car in the garbage? Well, just because those battery cells can't power a car for 300 miles anymore doesn't make them useless. Cells from old cars can be easily reused for lower capacity purposes like stationary energy storage. Take the battery modules out of the Tesla and put them into a cabinet that stores energy from solar panels. Use them to make battery backups for houses. The Tesla Powerwall uses 13 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. A Tesla Model S has 100 kilowatt hours of storage. So even just one tenth of that battery pack can power an entire house for a day. These high performance cells will age out of their first intended use case, but that doesn't mean they can't be repurposed and continue to be used for many years to come. And the third R is recombine. This is a tricky one. This is where you break down the battery cell into its base materials, separate them out, and then recombine them into a brand new battery cell. Lithium ion batteries are challenging. You can't just throw them straight into a big shedder because they'll catch fire. In the past, they were often broken down by smelting, but obviously that's not an ideal process for energy efficiency and it releases a lot of toxic fumes into the air. You can safely shred a battery cell while submerged in a non-toxic liquid. That is a popular choice right now. Another option is to freeze the battery solid at absolute zero with liquid nitrogen and then grind it up. Once it's gone through the giant meat grinder, the material left behind is referred to as black mass. This is a big clump of everything that used to be a battery. After that, it's a process to extract and separate the components. This can be done using chemicals to leach out the various elements. You can also dump the black mass into a liquid that is thick enough to float metals. The various elements will float at different levels in the liquid bath and that will make them fairly easy to collect. These processes are very effective at recovering the nickel, cobalt, and manganese from the battery. They'll typically get over 95% of those metals back in a usable form. Recovering the lithium is a little bit more challenging. That yield is typically down at around 85% at best. And then this material is packed and sold to the battery manufacturers at market rate, just like any other purified metal ore. Metals like nickel are commodities, so the price is determined by the mining industry, but the cost overhead on recycled nickel is nowhere near the same as mined nickel, so it has potential to be a very lucrative business model. There is likely more than enough metal in the ground to support our demand for lithium ion batteries, but the fact of the matter is, that our current mining industry does not have the capacity to extract resources at the pace required to actually transition the world to sustainable energy. So that absolutely needs to be supplemented with recycled material. There is no question about that. There's also no question about the reduced environmental impact. 
it takes much less energy and less water to recycle material versus mining with less toxic byproducts and significantly reduced impact on the landscape. We don't want to scale up mining operations if we don't have to. And to truly capitalize on the potential of battery recycling, we can actually start to integrate recycling and cell production into the same process. By manufacturing cells and recycling material all in one location, you can essentially create a closed loop system where old batteries come in and new batteries go out, where scrap from the manufacturing process and rejected cells that don't pass inspection can be immediately broken down and put back into the supply chain. There would probably still be a need to source material from mining, but it would be reduced, and that would reduce the overall materials cost of the battery cells. This is very important because the cost of batteries dominates the price of electric cars, and the cost of material dominates the price of batteries. So bringing down the cost of battery materials is at the root of bringing down the price of electric vehicles, which is something that we all want to see happen. I think that in the near future, there is a huge opportunity for Tesla here to incorporate more battery recycling into their Gigafactory model. The whole point of these manufacturing plants is to be as efficient, as automated, and as self-sufficient as possible. So bringing recycling on site just makes sense. And seeing as how one of Tesla's co-founders and former chief technical officer, J.B. Straubel, is currently leading the battery cycling industry with his company Redwood Materials, there's obviously an opportunity there for him and Elon to work together again. Maybe Tesla straight up acquires Redwood. Maybe they form a strategic partnership to work under the same roof the way that Tesla and Panasonic have done with cell production. It's hard to say what could happen. But this is definitely an industry to keep an eye on over the next few years. Big things are coming. How much electronic junk do you just have chilling in a drawer right now that you should be taking in for recycling? Be honest, we won't judge. I've got a couple of half-broken laptops and an army of cell phones dating back to the flip phone era. So let's remember to do our part and get these things somewhere where they'll be useful again. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.